Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab. And we have a suitably crazy bit of hardware to test in Crazy Tech Lab today because we have the daddy. We have the fastest consumer M.2 SSD available. This is the Crucial T705 and it can read your data at 14 and a half thousand megabytes a second. So pushing 15,000 megabytes a second already on PCI Express 5, it is twice as fast as the fastest PCI Express 4 SSD out there. And it does demand a bit of a premium in terms of price. I'll put up the specs and the pricing and all the TBW data up on the screen now. So you can take a quick look at it or pause this screen if you want to check, compare the different models. There is a four, a four terabyte model available, drool. Um, so what we've also got here today is the limited edition model, which is uh, basically equipped with a, a gorgeous white heatsink, but we will be testing that heatsink as well in our testing. We've got some temperature data to look at and also random reads and writes, sequential data, and also comparing some game access and load time data uh, courtesy of 3 Mark as well. So lots of exciting stuff to look at today. We're going to be comparing it to its predecessor, the Crucial T700, which is still readily available. That thing could dish out data at over 12,000 megabytes a second. And we will also be dropping in a very, very fast PCI Express 4 SSD as well to see how things fare there and whether you should go for one or the other based on your workloads. So I'd like to thank Crucial for sending me the SSD. I'd like to thank you guys for watching today's video. And don't forget to like and comment on this video if you found it informative. You can also see the buy link to this and other hardware in my description below, including all the best SSDs that I've tested, and also a link to my Amazon shop where all the best hardware that I've reviewed on this channel is located. All the best hardware that is very worthy of your cash. So don't forget to check out the links in the description below. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you are notified when I upload a new video. So big thanks to Crucial for sending over the SSD today. Let's crack on with the benchmarks. The first graph we have is the 3D Mark storage test specifically for game load time performance in megabytes a second and the Crucial T705 sitting ahead of the Crucial T700 Pro. So there's an, a bit of uplift over that SSD, even though there's uh, not that much in percentage terms, but we are dealing with a couple of thousand extra megabytes per second there, so we would probably expect to see increases here. And uh, further down the graph, we've got the WD Black SN850X, one of the fastest PCI Express 4 SSDs out there, and there's obviously quite a big difference between that one and the Crucial T705 Pro. So depending on what your game is and how much data there is uh, to actually load, the Crucial T705 Pro could actually reduce your game load times quite significantly. The next test is the 3D Mark game access time. So this is basically when you're accessing files, opening and closing folders and that kind of stuff. So again, it can improve game performance if you have a lower result here because the, it's basically the access time in microseconds. So lower is better. So the Crucial T705 Pro performing pretty well and having an advantage over the Crucial T700 Pro in both Battlefield 5 and uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, but in Overwatch, it was slightly slower than the Crucial T700 Pro. However, we can see at the bottom of the graph, we've got the WD Black SN850X, which is way down the bottom of the graph and uh, significantly slower at the access time test than the Crucial T705 Pro. Moving on to the Crystal Disk Mark test now then, and the sequential result is up first, but I do have a couple more SSDs in the graph here for the simple reason that the 3D Mark results that we looked at a minute ago, I have to I had to rerun on the SSDs that I actually had with me uh, because the results didn't seem to tally with the results that I got before. So I'm assuming that an update to that program has kind of changed the benchmark slightly. So I had to rerun those, SS those SSD numbers Unfortunately, I don't have all the SSDs with me still because they're review samples and a lot of them have been collected. So this one uh, is with Crystal Disk Mark data, which is the same. These results are backwards compatible. So we've got a few extra SSDs in the graph now. So Crucial T705 Pro at the top, we've got 14 and a half thousand megabytes a second at read and 12,700 megabytes a second write. Very, very, very fast, significantly quicker than both the Crucial T700 and also the Corsair MP700, which was Corsair's first PCI Express 5 SSD, so way out in front of those. Also, the rest of the SSDs in the graph are some of the faster uh, PCI Express 4 SSDs that I've tested previously as well. So we've got the WD Black SN850X there, so a pretty good performer, as you can see here, and that's the one that we included in the previous 3D Mark results as well. 
Moving on to the random 4K results now then, and we don't have a particularly inspiring result here from the Crucial T705 Pro. It's kind of within the margin of error of a lot of the other SSDs on test, and there are a couple of SSDs that were a bit faster, namely the Solodyne P44 Pro and the WD Black SN850X. So it goes to show that new technologies don't always bring in the best numbers, and we have seen this uh, with previous generations as well. The first PCI Express 4 SSDs weren't always that much faster, if at all, in random 4K tests. In fact, I seem to remember that a lot of them were actually a bit slower to start with. So you're not really gonna be seeing a noticeable difference though between this SSD and others. Moving on to the all important temperature results now then, and what you wanna try and do is keep this thing well away from 80 degrees because at 81 degrees, the T705 will start to throttle and reduce its speed. So anything you can do to do that Will be very very beneficial so here we can see on my water cooled test system which doesn't have a lot of local airflow the temperature did get up to 80 degrees and would have probably topped 81 if i'd left it for a little bit longer in the benchmark so not a great result you need to make sure that you have some local airflow going over this thing if you opt for the heatsink model so make sure that you have your case fans installed at the front and that one of them is pointed directly at the ssd on your motherboard to keep it cool alternatively of course you can use your motherboard's heatsink and if you do have an, uh, a PCI Express 5 compatible M.2 port on your motherboard it probably comes with a very large heatsink as standard and personally I would probably opt to use that just to avoid any throttling situations because those heatsinks are probably going to do a better job at cooling it than the heatsink that's included with the model that I've reviewed today but if you want to use the white model that we've, in that we've used today the limited edition model then just make sure that your motherboard has some local airflow flowing over the M.2 heatsink. So what do we make of Crucial's T705 then? Well, this thing is absolutely ridiculous. A read speed pushing 15,000 megabytes a second, at write speed well over 12,000 megabytes a second, unequivocally the fastest consumer M.2 SSD out there right now. And those speeds are gonna benefit those of you out there with very large files and folders that you deal with on a regular basis if you're a heavy content creation user. And it will benefit game load times as well, as we saw in the 3D Mark test, the access times and the megabytes a second read speeds for the game tests were all better than the T700, the previous PCI Express 5 SSD from Crucial, and noticeably better than the WD SN850X, which is a very, very fast uh, PCI Express 5, uh, 4 SSD, sorry. So the elephant in the room though is the value. The gigabytes per dollar cost is absolutely crazy. And just as, a, just as a couple of examples, the one terabyte version of this costs more than double the price of a two terabyte PCI Express 4 SSD. And if you go for the two terabyte model, that costs a lot more than a four terabyte PCI Express 4 SSD as well. So some pretty terrible value with this thing, but we weren't really expecting anything less. This is cutting edge technology. You're always gonna pay a premium and we weren't really expecting anything different. So if you are gonna go for this SSD, you need to make sure firstly, that if you're going for the gorgeous white limited edition model that we've got here, that, you're, that there is some local airflow going over your motherboard, either from your case fans or your cooler or something like that, because otherwise this thing will throttle if it's not getting any airflow. Otherwise, you can just go for the heatsink less version and use the large heatsink that's probably included on your motherboard. It probably does if it's got a PCI Express 5 compatible M.2 slot. So for everybody else out there though, PCI Express 4 is still the way to go. Something like Crucial's T500, for example, still able to dish out 7,000 megabytes a second, massively better value. And for me, capacity always wins. It, I'm all about an excess in capacity with M.2 SSDs than I am an excess of speed. Capacity you deal with every single day of the week and I would much rather have an excess of capacity as I say. I don't want to have to be uninstalling programs and dealing with running out of space. If you run out of space your SSD runs a lot slower anyway so it's always better to have more capacity than you actually need. And for me, I would much rather go for a four terabyte PCI Express 3 SSD than a two terabyte PCI Express 4 SSD. I just love capacity. I've got a lot of files. I'm dealing with a lot of crap on a daily basis. I want space for all my games and all that kind of stuff. So for me, it's an incredible SSD, but it's either for those with a lot of cash or for those where they're gonna be dealing with those very large files 
uh, or heavy content creation users on a daily basis and those extra speeds are gonna benefit them. For the rest of us, PCI Express 4 is still the way to go. So I would like to thank Crucial for sending this SSD over. It's been a blast. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video informative, you can also use one of the links to bel uh, below to say thanks or even buy me a coffee. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks to Crucial again, and I'll be back very, very soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.